Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Bada Siblings. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we read Only Forever by Linda Lale Miller. This book does have a serious trigger warning in that the main character, our heroine, she has a really bad ex who is very kind of gaslighting and toxic in the most Kanye West ways possible. Um, this book is also kind of couched in reality in that it's a modern day setting. And so all of the things that he does, the toxic behaviors feel very real. And also her reactions to them are very real. So like she makes some very poor choices in response to him in a way that's way too realistic. Yes, it's kind of like you feel like you're in the Eminem, Rihanna, love the way you lie <laughs> video. But And all the other people in the um, book don't seem to think that it's nearly as scary as it is. So this is this is actually upsetting. And there are definitely some people who um, would not be well served by reading this book or even listening to the, this podcast because we're going to talk about like the, the stuff that he does that is really, really... Um, you know, nobody gets hurt, but in the real world, that's a dude who you need, like, a restraining order against. Yeah, it's, it's all bonkers. Yeah, it's, terrible. it's bad. Also bonkers and terrible is our hero, the guy that we're supposed to root for, is monstrous. He is monstrous in that he's like, hey, hey, Vanessa, let's go on a date. And the date is a surprise jogging session, y'all. She, and he does it twice. And a trigger warning for the dudes out there, he does it in jeans. Yeah. No, it's not recommended, folks. Uh -uh. Mm, yeah. So much like just let's go jogging. Yeah. I. Mm, nobody likes surprise exercise. Even people who love exercise don't no. like to be like surprised with it. Like what if you just ate like a really. I don't trust couples that enjoy working out together because let me tell you, that man, our, our hero also is an, an ex NFL football player. So his jogging level is going to be at a different level than hers. Like, and so it's just yeah, it's like, not fair. Uh, yeah. Like it's just in general. Yeah. I, I used, I used to work out with my husband back when we were young and skinny and attractive, but I think I was like still trying to like impress him <laughs> <laughs> before just like, yeah, like before we all gave up as humans. Crone status took a place. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's jump into this book. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Linda Lale Miller. This is our second of hers. Our first one was the famously wacky Banner O'Brien. Linda Lale Miller is more of, like, she does a lot of historical westerns. Yeah, um, and, and I believe she still does them, too. She's yeah. huge in that, like, regard. If you go to the library, you'll see, like, just a shot. Yeah, and if you read about her, you know, again, she grew up in, like, Washington State. Her dad was a, like, marshal. And so her books are very on track with that. So this was a modern one that we did by her. And so it was kind of a, a little bit of a different different angle and those can be really interesting like when somebody who's known for one thing does mm -hmm. like a thing that's like out of their wheelhouse um it can, it can go any number of ways i did get um kind of in a hurry so i got the wine that's from oregon instead of washington because they go to washington once in this thing um yeah. anyway i just did not have like a, a ton of time and i should have emailed morgan elliott beforehand but i did not so anyway this wine's good for like cancer and stuff i mean as in like it goes to cancer funding yeah it's, it's not good for your cancer what's it called it's called Car Hill, and it's a Pinot Grigio. It's very buttery. It's got more mm -hmm. of a Chardonnay taste. Yeah, I didn't dig that. it on the on the first sip, but I am um, I am warming to it. Yes. All right. So you got the the front cover cover. I think we <laughs> ripped it off in frustration, but no, it's one of those. Back. It's one of those beat up paperbacks, yeah. and like a you know a very. Um, it's had a hard life, uh, but I'll read the back. Um, the moment he saw her, Nick D'Angelo wanted her. There was something about Vanessa Lawrence, the beautiful television personality that stopped him in his tracks like no woman before, and he hadn't even met her yet, but he intended to. Nick's persistence finally paid off when Vanessa agreed to meet him. Yeah, and then you took her fucking jogging. <laughs> she expected arrogance and confidence, but was surprised by Nick's complexity. She started letting down her guard until she learned that Nick had played a role in her past that was as shocking as it was heartbreaking. <sighs> Ugh. Anyway, so this book, um, it has one of those boring um, 80s covers. It's very florid. Well, yeah, like it, it's not, there's no pictures on it. It's just flowers and like the um, the author's name and the title in that like italic, like cursive font. This is a 1989 book. This feels much earlier than 1989. It does. Except for like, there, there's little little weird technology bits. What it doesn't say when it says she's a television personality is that she's on the Home Shopping Network. Yeah. So this book starts off really cute. It starts with Nick being sick, which could be a trigger warning in itself. Oh, and my God. Sick, dude. It's really funny because, oh, 
LLM, Linda Leal Miller, gets it right about. Like, a sick man, there is nothing worse in the world than a sick man. Nobody, you could have your leg cut off. And you would still have to go fix things for the sick man. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So it starts with him sick and he's just flipping through channels and he stops on. Hey, kids, this is prior to Amazon. He stops on the QVC. <laughs> he stops on the home, the home shopping. It's network. called Midas Network. It's, it's new in this. But it's, it's now. And then the thing about OK, kids. Is that if you did not give a rat's ass about anything that they were selling on QVC or HSN, you would still somehow, when you're flipping through the channels, end up spending like 45 minutes watching these people sell you fairy earrings or... (laughs) That was my mom always saying. Like, after Falcon Crest or Dallas or whatever, like, you know, because that stuff would be on and it would end around 10... 1030. She would spend the last like television hour watching the QVC and having her little like tiny bowl of ice cream and one of those little like melanin bowls, you know, the ones that are like the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we would watch the QVC together. And so when this book started off, I was like, oh, this is super cute. Like, and there was something about it that made you keep watching, even if yeah. you were utterly uninterested in whatever they're saying. Like like, yeah, it was like TikTok for the past lanes <laughs> tiktok for life and i mean it would be like well in an hour we're gonna have star trek stuff and so you'd be like well i guess i have to stay up another hour to watch the star trek stuff even though you had no intention of watching qvc to start with and it would give you like the ticker of like how many people had bought mm-hmm. it it was very exciting like, it was also like by now like there was a fomo like aspect oh gosh, to it like yes. you only have two minutes and 23 to get the deal 21 yeah, yeah. To get the deal um and sometimes if you called in they would put you on air yeah. it's like a radio show in that way it was amazing so you know he's flipping through the the channels he's all sick and he see he sees vanessa and he's like you know immediately ensorcelled by her probably qvc pants suit yes. like yes i'm gonna make this happen and at first i was like oh this is gonna be creepy um but they have mutual friends yeah like, and it's not like that gross thing in blue days at sea where he has dinner with her <laughs> boss and they all talk about her sex life no they, they have mutual friends her good friend is married to like one of the guys who runs QVC, I yeah. guess, and so he like the, he sets up a, a mutual like like a, a like double, a double date. date. Yeah, I, I mean, like, and the thing is, she's like, "Oh God, is this another goddamn double date?" And they're like, "No, no, no, this guy's mine." Yeah, and so you know, they they be and but before that, it already starts up is that her ex, whose name is Parker, and a baseball player, professional and, yeah. baseball player. So the you see where this is kind of going is that she's already dated a professional athlete Ooh. and like you know that so she doesn't. Yes, Nick D'Angelo, who is sick on a Murphy bed at the beginning of the uh-huh. book, is a former MNFL football player. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> we don't know why he's on a Murphy bed. So yeah, and her so Parker is like already like stalky and bad like he wrote a book he wrote this tell-all book where he basically lies about her and talks about how she's an infomaniac or something which you know but like so they meet at the lawyer's office and 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 she's like no no i don't want you to publish this book and he's like wait you can't stop me and she's like well actually i kind of can like like that's the one thing that she's holding out for i guess they're still in the i don't know it's it's just the whole thing is so upsetting that like the details blurred for me so like when she gets home after that she's driving home from she isn't going to go on this date, but she's driving home from from the lawyer's office. And in between there, Parker has called her and left like 20 messages on her voicemail. It's crazy. It's so, yeah, like she needs a better lawyer. It is every warning sign in the book. She this needs, is he is going to kill you. She needs several lawyers. She mm-hmm. needs an intellectual property lawyer who can just shut that book down. And then she needs a real, you know, <laughs> divorce lawyer who can get a cease and desist on this man. So it's really strange because you're dealing with this love story, I guess, between her and nick and then you've got this really disturbing stuff happening so you can't i I couldn't really get you can't relax involved in the book so yeah because i mean the whole thing is so upsetting and you also have her brother who is moving into her um like a garage apartment just thank god i'm like oh god she needs some mails to be living in this house because she needs somebody to like you know uh, testify in the eventual murder trial um, and her, her brother is a chiropractor student who um, is moonlighting as a stripper on his way through school it's her cousin. We find out that her parents died in a car accident when she was very young, and she was raised by her grandparents. And I think the cousin was raised by the grandparents. So essentially, like, like cousin a, by yeah. proxy. But, but she's but, always kissing on him, though. I it's mean, weird. It's, yeah, and it, like she's always talking about how hot he is. So I don't really. I mean, I guess if he's that. a if he's a backcracker slash, you know, backcracker, <laughs> like maybe he is hot. Who knows? Uh, he was much more interesting to me. I know. I wanted to read the book about him. And again. I, 
it's been a hot minute since I've read this book, so it's kind of like, I'm like, what? Who? Huh? Well, and he's, like we found out later, actually dating Nick's sister, because there's four people who live in this town. The town, by the way, is Seattle, but there's four yeah. people who live here. So they go on this date, and it's instant, like, you know, they dan- they're they dancing, which is always wild to me. I'm like, where are these places where you just dance? Uh, well, it, it was um, 30 years ago, Courtney. <laughs> no, it's not 30 like- years ago was not 1970, but was actually 1990. Uh, so they're, like, they're not at the club, but they're at a pl- fancy place. And he's yeah, they're the, those, yeah, she's always wearing tuxedos. So many he, tuxedos. Is there somewhere in Columbia, South Carolina, that if you wore a tuxedo and some, nobody was getting married, <laughs> that they wouldn't call the cops? I don't know. So many tuxedos. So... They're dancing and, he, you know, she's instantly attracted to him. He's, you know, he's making the moves on her. They kiss. It's passionate. She's into it. But, you know, she's like, no, no, no. So, I can't date anybody. Which, I mean, she's. Yes. Uh, is legitimate because she's like, dude, I am. I have a lot going my on girl right needs, now. <laughs> my girl needs some fucking therapy. She needs some Valium. She needs some uppers. She needs some downers. She needs not to be taken on a surprise jogging session. Which is what Like, I- yeah. <laughs> so he, you know, he convinces her to go out with him after the no, no, no. And the first thing that he does, the, his his plan for wooing is, hey, girl, let's go jogging. And uh, like she, he doesn't warn her. And he's wearing a hoodie and jeans. And then he jogs. And then she's not as fast at jogging as he is. Like, you know, she's in shape, but she's in, like, TV shape. So that's probably, like, cocaine. It's the 80s. Yes. But so, like, yeah, she can't keep up with them and all this business. And then she, he takes her back to his house, and they both take showers, which is so fucking weird. I don't like it. I, 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 like I have said, I don't understand shower dates. It's gross. Well, it's okay. weird. I mean, just think about the actual, like, you know, nuts and bolts of this. So he takes the first shower. She's just met this dude, and she's alone in his house and like what are you supposed to do like see now you have a phone okay yeah. back in 1988 all you had to do was watch qvc i mean that's what you did with your time you didn't have fucking twitter she's not gonna put qvc on because it's just her face yeah and that's weird i'm gonna tell you right now if i went on a date with some man and he was like hey we're gonna go jogging and then we're gonna go back to my place and i'm gonna take a shower i'd be texting sarah to be like hey get me the fuck out of here <laughs> because one this man took me jogging and two he is showering on a date i don't believe in showering on dates one through ten that's what I'm putting down. Yeah. I don't. I don't like it. Fair. I think it's weird. I don't. Unless like you there's go to like a, like an overnight somewhere. There's something deeply personal about like almost as personal as sex is like more somebody being in my shower. Well, and then the other way around, like not my guest shower. You're being in somebody else's shower, and like you don't have clothes or anything, so you had to put on. She has to put on like his, his sister's corduroy oh jumpsuit. God. But so, like, okay, you, you've never been in this house before. You don't know this guy. You lock the door, but then, like, you know, you figure it's just one of those privacy locks or whatever. Yes. You're naked, and, and, like, you don't know how the shower works. You don't know how the shower works. You're, like, wearing like, his body wash It's or a nightmare. Like, it's, it's a nightmare. And the more I think about it. And you know that man don't have conditioner? <laughs> he's got the one. He's got, he's got the, the one bottle. He's so got the two and one. Two. He's also like that bottle is also like Axel three and Breeze. one. Yeah, it's like, like, like yeah, it's like the Irish Spring three and one does everything. So she's getting out of the shower, frizzy haired in a corduroy jumpsuit, and like I'd have been like, no, I'm leaving. This and he me. always has to say like, uh, there's a there's a, a closet full of women's clothes. Don't worry, it's my sister because her first impulse is to get mad about it. And this is where you can tell that this is going nowhere but to hell. I hate them both. So, you know, she takes her man shower, puts on this corduroy (laughs) jumpsuit. He orders food from the restaurant that you later find out he owns. (laughs) <laughs> and so, like, they're just sitting around eating some spaghetti. They do eat a lot of Italian food in so this. So much spaghetti. Which is actually kind of great. And then and then he's like, hey. Wait, on a first, uh, like, first and a half date also, you're supposed to be slurping up spaghetti in front of this man? <laughs> and so they're like, hey, <laughs> hey. They, they're standing, you know, sitting around his fireplace, and he's like, I mean... Uh, they they have some heavy petting. The heavy petting is kind of hot. Oh, yeah. This is one of those books where everything above the waist is really hot. Yeah. It's like there's a lot of boob boob, mm-hmm. boob action. I keep saying boob. But um, it is good. Like she, oh, she okay. gets like she basically has like a nip mm-hmm. orgasm. I'm like, all right. Oh, all right, but it's one of those things where there's a storm outside. And she's one of those romance heroines where she's terrified of storms. They always go running and it's beautiful weather. And then they go inside and it storms. Yeah. Um, and there's this line where like the lightning came inside the house. Yes. Like, well, then you need to, like, lock your doors and shit. <laughs> That's why you don't problems. shower during the store. <laughs> like, everybody's old, everybody's father told them, don't shower during the storm. Oh, God, do you think she was on the phone during the storm? Young people, back in the day, the phone used to plug into the wall. Yeah. And your parents told you that if you talked on the phone during a thunderstorm, you would die. Yeah, there was that in the shower. It's going to kill you. Yeah, absolutely. Times. 
I'm still like, do we still have what are the what is the hard evidence on shower and during a thunderstorm? I, I know that know? the MythBusters did it. I think that it's okay, but I don't really remember because I think you know, so, but I would still get like, oh, like, oh young people. Get... There used to be a show called <laughs> MythBusters. Oh, <laughs> um, so they they have some heavy petting. It's fine, and then he's all like, okay, and then this I liked because she it explains like, I've got a lot going on with my ex. He was also a professional athlete. It's bad, okay? And she and he's like, okay, I'm going to take it slow with you. Yeah. And I can all like it, but I'm going to take it slow with you. So what she does is she goes home after that, and she calls and leaves a message on his machine breaking up with him. Yeah. Young people answering machines <laughs> are like voicemail, except they had tiny little tapes in them. Teeny tiny tapes. So yeah. she breaks up with him. And then she's, like, mad that he doesn't reach out. Like, yeah. Like, y'all went on, like, a date, and he, yeah, and you said absolutely not. And then, but then eventually he does, like, okay, it turns out that he was in Portland. But he also has another restaurant. They do this. This goes on for most of the book. They go on one date, and then one of them breaks up with the other one. Be a machine. Yeah, like, that answering machine is just full of fuck you. I don't know. Uh, all I keep thinking about is, like, I would love if it was, like, if Nick's answering machine was, like, like a stanza, like, believe it or not, Nick <laughs> isn't at home. Leave a message at the beep. Young people, people used to do elaborate greetings <laughs> on their their answering machines, as opposed to now, where if it says anything but like beyond like the the one yes. that came from the factory, you are so angry. Yes, it doesn't matter because you would never be leaving a voicemail anyway, right? No, no. So, um, yeah, Mom. like this book is like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Meanwhile, we've got back at their castle. We've got her dealing with this gross ex who keeps like showing up. Oh he keeps showing, showing up, up at her house and then shoving past her to get in her house. And like the thing is, like, like nobody is taking it seriously. No, like he comes to her work, mm -hmm. and because he's an ex like baseball star, they're like, oh ha 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 ha, and it's it's really bothersome. Yeah. Um, and. Nick's got some weird machismo about it. Like, well, what's going on with you and Parker? Like, nobody's like, hey, why is nobody talking about why Parker is unhinged and just keeps chasing this he woman? He fills her house with flowers. He's got a girlfriend slash fiance. Yeah. And this poor woman, we don't see her. We don't know what's going on. So, it, again, this book, which is like 200 pages, is 150 pages of nonsense. So you end up with... Vanessa dealing with Parker and dealing with Nick, who he could be worse about it, but he could also be better about it. Um, she wants to get out of the QVC game and become an actual like news anchor. And, and here we are back to explaining news magazines, which we explained once before on this show. I forget what the book was. There used to be young people. <laughs> this thing called like, well, it was like 16. Never mind. That wouldn't help. Uh, there were local news shows that were like human interest. PM news. Magazine. PM Magazine. So like they would be either early in the morning or they'll be on like prime time and they were, they tended to be more human interesting. Yeah. Like sometimes they'd be more newsy it's as in like, like, you know, have would, like candidates like, for office on, but... It would be kind of like the last hour of, like, Kathy Lee and Hoda, but regional. Like, where it's just, you know, or CBS Sunday morning. Like, those kind of things. But regional. And so she's wanting to do that. She's really wanting to get into journalism. Like, you would end up probably cooking something on little burners in front of the camera. Exactly. Like, that kind of thing. You yeah. Know? And so she's trying to do that. Meanwhile, like, she's balancing these two jabronis like one's calling in to be like hey go on a date with me one's just showing up like it's a lot of like just and her brother does like um unfortunately her brother takes her lead in this so does not say like look you get out of here i'm gonna punch you in the fucking face i'm a chiropractor i can like break your back that's right <laughs> but her her brother it does seem to take it seriously yes. not seriously enough to not i don't even understand how the flowers got in the house i assume that the florists left them in the house oh, like do they have like a skeleton key like what's surprised. happening or i mean did the brother like say well i guess i shouldn't throw these out and just haul them all in like one i mean i would you other? know what stalker or not i would want a house full of flowers no i bet it's all these lilies that smell i can't stand a smelly lily you're like my mom, mom it's it's my mom who is you know passed away like it's been five years now um she hated, 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 hated gardenia. And like now in my later age. I do like gardenia. Now, like what I was saying, like now in my later age, I'm like, oh, I like the smell of gardenia. She's like, it smells like a funeral. So like every time I light a gardenia candle, no, like, like, I think about her. Like, 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 like any green smell and flower to me, like Easter lilies. Ugh. 
Yeah. And so, okay, so we're in South Carolina, and you can't grow, you can grow lilacs here, but they won't bloom. So yeah. I hear my whole life about, oh, the smell of the lilacs. My mom, this is the smell of the lilacs. Up in Pittsburgh, I'm like, are there any, like, uh, it's lilac season, so like, let's go smell a damn lilac. Like, it smells like that green shit. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, like, it's, it's wild up in New Why York. Why smell like, that shit? My, my mother-in-law can just throw some seeds out, and all of a sudden it's, like, just fucking glory, amazing plants, you know? And then, like, we're, like, just try. Like, I can't even because my yard gets so much sun. I can't even get a fucking azalea to grow in this yard. Yeah, that's, that's why you grow um carnivorous plants. Like I know you love a carnivorous. I do love plant. it. Mine are, I didn't know Saracenia is like those upright uh, pitcher plants. They bloom and they have these crazy flowers. And mine are mine are blooming this year. And I'm very I'm proud of them. Christopher, so he loves it. Okay. Anyway, digress. <laughs> anyway, so this book is so boring that we're talking about plants. Yeah. I mean, these people are just like, very tiresome when they're not being terrified, yes. which is difficult. Anyway, so we go through this thing where like. She agrees to go on a talk show with Parker. And, like, at first you think she's going to control the narrative and, like... Well, she said she's not going to do it. She's not going to do it. She's not going to do it. This is in New York City. So she has to travel with Parker. So, but then then she, like, she changes her mind. And it's clear that what she intends to do is to go on this talk show and be like, actually, yeah, this fucking... Da, like d bag did this this and this and this and this. none of this happens so no. she goes she's all nervous so she gets drunk with parker which evidently is how they first like had sex like she got drunk and uh, and then she leaves nick she calls nick and is all like Woo, i'm drunk with parker she gets photographed by the tabloids and then she goes on the show and like just basically toes the line that well, part and, is and because funny. like it because parker said like she she tells Parker, oh, you know, I had planned to, I'm leaving. Because Nick tells her, you know, if you want to go, I'll pick you up at the fucking airport. Yeah, like, Nick you is, know? like, super supportive in this. He's yeah. like, what is Tell happening? You're going like, to be You're spiraling. Like, I will get you. And, and yeah, Parker's like, yeah, I, I knew you were. So he had, like, this diabolical plan, which you don't even find out what the plan is to, like, to, it's nice to, to rein her in. And so she's so demoralized by the whole thing by him. How, like stealing a march on her and everything that she yeah. just goes and she does the interview. The interview, which by the way is about his book, which is a tell all about her. Uh, that was the thing. I was like, nobody, like, again, nobody wants that book. Like, nobody cares. Like, they, uh, anyway, okay. So she comes back, her and Nick break up for the 150th time. Mm-hmm. This time, because she had prior to going to New York. And again, I know that we are all over the place, but this book is so boring that I have forgotten half of it. Like, it's just falling out of my brain because it's so boring. So prior to going to New York, she had had an interview with, like, Good Day Seattle or whatever. And, like, it was really promising. Yeah, Magazine Seattle. Yeah. And, you know, but then what happened was that the tabloid picture came out of her drunk and a... She is drunk, y'all. She's not even, like... This this is my other boner contingent. She's She's fully clothed. She is at... She is at the Village Green. A tavern on the Green. Tavern on the Green. She's at the Tavern on the Green, which is like, if you're going to be drunk anywhere, be drunk there. That's fancy drunk. She's fancy drunk. Mm-hmm. She is not like Courtney coming out of Jake's at 3 a.m. falling <laughs> on her hands and knees because her shoes fell off like drunk. She what is, is the picture here? What is the news story here? Was it such a slow news day that somebody was taking a, <laughs> a slightly bottle. sleepy looking? No, no, it's like she sort of like like she basically just like was like, whoa. And they're like, oh. And so she lost that job. But she had gotten an offer after she comes back. She gets an offer for, like, San Francisco. Like, she has, like, five different offers because even though she thought she did really bad in the interview, yeah. like, she was just kind of shut down. And I mean, people could tell who knew her in the interview, like, oh, my yes. God. And they don't do anything about it. So, again, so she comes back. Her and Nick, our hero, break up for the hunter's time because she's gotten this offer to go to San Francisco. And Nick's like, well, bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, have a good time. We, we are completely discounting the fact that this motherfucker is an exit NFL player. Like, he's like a Joe Montana type. Like, the guy who actually made money, not, He's got, like, two or three restaurants. Like, Portland to San Francisco in the era of private jets. Like, that's not a big deal. Yeah. It's it's crazy. because, And the thing is, like, she even says, like, look, I, when I married Parker, um, he made me drop um, drop out of college. Yes. He made me like so. In other words, he issued these ultimatums, and it was all about his career. And now I am divorced from him, and it's all about my career. And Nick is like, "You would leave me to go to San Francisco? I want kids." Rah, rah, rah. And then she even says something. Well, I'm not going to marry you like that. And he's all then all he's like, "Mary, ah." And she's like, "Well, let's shack up because now she wants to like you know be able to explore her career options." And then he gives her an ultimatum. Oh my god, it's so this stupid. guy is so trash. But I, I was so mad at him for that. I hate everybody in this book. Yeah. 
Well, I don't hate Rodney, the chiropractor stripper. No, I don't hate Rodney. So they break up. She goes home for the holidays. She has already sold her house. Yes. She's, <laughs> like, she's gone home for the holidays. Fuck you, Rodney. She's just asking that the new buyers let him continue to live in the garage. She talks to grandma. And grandma's like, well, do you love him? She's like, yeah. She's like, well, that should be enough. And she's like, but then, and then all of a sudden, Vanessa, like, again, we have to have this weird, it's not even a third act, like, drama thing. It's like, this book is so crazy. She's like, well, what if he dies? Because all of a sudden, now we're dealing with, like, her trauma of her parents dying. And her grandma's like, well, what if he dies? Like, <laughs> what if you die? You can get hit by a bus tomorrow, bitch. And so she ends up finally, like... She goes and gets him. Gets him. He doesn't just call him. She goes and takes a train to get his ass, to drag his ass back to Spokane. It's awful. And then so, like... For for Christmas. <laughs> Roddy tries... To, you have to have a Christmas thing. All these fucking books. Have to have a Christmas Roddy thing. Tries and then to she gets off. pregnant. Yeah, Roddy Ugh. tries to square off for a second. It's like... It's so stupid. I hate it. This Rodney's time. the only real one in this whole book. And so, yeah, she ends up pregnant. She ends up not taking the job, but I think like another job. No, because the original Seattle job came back up. They just, they, they took more than a week to call her the fuck back. And she's got, uh, uh, unrealistically for the 80s, actually, her stock in that company goes up because she's pregnant. Yeah. Usually they would fire your ass because oh, yeah. you were pregnant. And back so, in the day. yeah, it ends with her like pregnant and happy and blah. <laughs> So we will go to questions. All right. Question time. Okay. So big dick energy or big dick energy? <sighs> I think it's hard to gauge and get a read on it because of the X, the X factor. Yeah. Because we. Um, the thing is, this book could have been fun, stupid, except it was just a very distracting that like there was this really scary fucking X shit going on. So I really had a hard time really gauging the um, the, the guy, Nick, because, well, for one thing, it's not even a situation like we've had in the before, like where you've got a scary ex and she won't tell him. Um, and actually that happens in Banner O'Brien, come to think of it. Uh, but yeah. like this one, he knows about it. Everyone it, knows. Everyone knows about it. And everybody is like, oh, Parker, ha, ha, ha. And there's actually even a gross thing where, like, um, Nick was involved, like, uh, Parker, like, fucked his ex-wife. <laughs> and that's, oh, yeah. yeah, one of the reasons they broke up. But, like, Nick is very honest about it and all. I didn't, you know, honestly, I couldn't even get a read on him as a person. I felt like the focus of this book was Parker. Yeah. And so big dick energy is that Parker is a big dick. Yeah. And, and I mean, it was just so incredibly toxic that it was really hard to pay attention to anything else in that book. And you couldn't just, like, this should have been like a, oh, look at these people who are all dot dot eleven screaming at each other, like, a, like in The Bride or whatever. Yeah. Or even in Banner O'Brien. Yeah. Like, again, because I think the historical context of that book yeah. allows you to go out of yourself a little bit. But mm -hmm. this one, because it is somewhat modern, these are very real things that are happening to this woman. And again, like, I didn't care about Nick. I didn't care that he was Italian. I didn't care that he had a restaurant with, like, the, the checker tablecloths or anything nonsense like that. Because all I kept thinking about was, like, well, this other dude is going to murder go, this go, girl. run, run, <laughs> yeah, run. Like, yeah, exactly. And everybody is like, like, okay, the way that people were laughing about Kanye, like, stalking Kim. Mm -hmm. No, no, that is scary. That should mm -hmm. never be normalized. And then her decisions about, um, oh, God, her when she goes to New York, which, of course, is a bad decision. But, I mean, you know, it's a realistic decision. Yeah, you thought you, like, I felt like we thought that, oh, she's going to, like, take back the narrative. And well, that's what she thought, yeah. too. And then she makes these bad choices there, but they're mm -hmm. the kind of bad choices that people actually make in real life. And you could see yourself making them. Yeah. And it just made me feel sick and queasy. It was awful. Yeah. So, I mean, it is really hard to take anything else in this book seriously as a fun romance because it has. These, yes. So... I mean, you know, no. I kind of feel like people always do this, but I mean, we should do this also. If you yourself are in a situation like this, yeah, um, we are not shaming you for making these decisions. We want you to get help. We want you to call whoever in your area, like, um, is the the hotline or the people to call yeah. and talk to people who have experience with this. Because when you're on the inside, you might think it's normal for this person to send you a house full of flowers. So you know, you shouldn't feel ashamed if you are making what, in retrospect, are you know uh, decisions that play right into this guy hands because it's all his fault but you should absolutely do what you can do to get yourself out of the situation yes so um yeah that being said would you talk shit with her about the heroin i also couldn't stand her oh my god <laughs> sarah and i were talking about this prior to recording i feel like i am like for me i'm the one who typically doesn't like the unlikable heroin more <laughs> and it's not that i mean i don't mind somebody who's prickly 
I don't mind that. What I do mind is when somebody is so unpleasant in all aspects of their lives. Like, I like a book where somebody's like maybe like more guarded about a dude, but like great with her female friends. Yeah. This person, Vanessa, is just awful all the way around. Like, and I, I was, I wanted her to succeed. Like, I wanted her yeah. to get her a little uh, PM magazine yeah, but thing. And like, I wanted she, her to like emerge from she this. She has some really yeah. great like friendships and she's got really great like relationships with her cousin brother and all this kind of stuff. But she takes those for granted and treats those people terribly. Mm-hmm. And when they give her good, sound, solid advice about like, you know, opening her heart and all this kind of stuff, she's like, ah, you know, like I, there's nothing likable about her to me. No, I mean, like, I, I liked the concept of like QVC heroin. Like, yeah, I like yeah. When you like when this book opened up and it gave me a QVC heroin, I was like, yes, let's do it. But I mean, and, like she and he are the, well, they deserve each other because they are constantly breaking up with each other on their answering machine. And like she takes herself so seriously mm-hmm. for being a QVC presenter. Like you have to have a little bit of a person. Like yeah, yeah, you know. So uh, I just did not like her. Okay. That killed a bitch, though. I mean, like, there's a lot of women in this. Yes, she's got, like, a really good female friendship, and they don't just talk about Nick. What they mm-hmm. talk about is, like, you know, they Her talk about the repercussions of her divorce, and they talk about being open to new things and new relationships and jobs and all and her grandma is great yes um, and you know it's it's not a female relationship but her um her cousin brother yeah and gina also nick's sister yeah. who she borrows that awesome jumpsuit from mm-hmm. <laughs> so i mean it is like again it is you know it should have been right up our alley and honestly i think that i could have liked one or the other of them better if it had not had this really scary business going on yes exactly yeah. Um, so when it comes to consent, is this book more Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? So between our main characters, again, Nick is really good about consent and wanting consent and like needing verbal consent. But yeah, I mean, he says like, you know, that he wants to take it slow because he's really concerned about her doing something that she doesn't really want to do because of the experiences that she's had in the past and all this stuff. But he won't let her drink too much. Yeah. I mean, which is kind of controlling, but I mean, like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, it makes sense because she has said, like, I got too drunk and I really regretted it when I like first met Parker, all this stuff. No, he, he is great with that. Yeah. Like, I mean, again, but then we have the Parker issue. And again, the way that this is treated. He breaks into her hotel room. He breaks into her hotel room. He, like, constantly just shows up at her workplace. And everybody is just like, ha, 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 ha. And, like, there's a constant sexual threat, too. Because, like, yes. he breaks into her hotel room. And she he tries to make her feel bad for being scared of it. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, I never raped you. Like, well, you just broke the fuck out of my hotel yeah. room, asshole. It's, it's really upsetting. So, yeah. the again, while Nick... Who honestly feels like our secondary character in the book mm-hmm. is great. Parker, the douchebag who somehow, even though she's not like he's not the hero, is the main character. Yeah, of the book. it totally is. Um, how badly are you judging your mama for reading this book? Eh, I feel like this is very on par. Like yeah. again, my you know, it's very one of those short. It's not a Harlequin, but it feels like one it, of those. It's the short contemporary romance. Like that's the kind of thing that like you know, like a million. Yeah, people are reading these days like a contemporary romance where you got. I, I do appreciate it's two adult characters, yeah, who have sexual grown, past that are yeah. not an issue, which you know is not as common in books in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's the kind of thing that you like they 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 make a ton of these days, but that maybe not as many. So yeah, I'm not judging her at all, and I'm kind of hoping that hey, maybe it brought up some topics about like I know. what to do if your ex does this. Yeah, I would like yeah. So uh, it's just. Ugh. Would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? Well, it is a it, it's white people, so I mean, it's in Seattle. Yeah, so they, God, they go to the fish market, and somehow even the fish market people are related to Dick. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. everybody. Like, no, there's like five people in all of Seattle. So like, and they're all the related in to Seattle. Nick. Yeah, they're all related to Nick. Ugh. You're, oh, this is this is this is the Sarah one. <laughs> You're not leaving the house looking like that. There's a lot of outfits. Though. There are outfits. This man, after he took this date shower, puts back out his jeans and also a crop top so she can enjoy his football abs. Oh, my God. Oh my God. And so um, and she picks deliberately out of um, his sister's closet at his house, which is weird. Anyway, um, he also has an island house. And, um, uh. and this is what I don't understand. He's got like five properties and we open with him sleeping in a Murphy bed. Well, maybe like, he's doing it because he doesn't have a bedroom TV. Uh, you didn't always used to have a bedroom TV back in the day. No, I mean, like, you didn't, but did you always have a Murphy bed? Well, I mean, it's like a big city apartment. Maybe it's like, really small. A Murphy bed. Yeah, like, I, I can understand a fold-out couch, because my friend and I, we would used to, like, at her old house in Irma, we'd get hung over, and 
we get hung over. That's why I call it. We get hung over. We get hung over, but we pull out the pull out couch in the living room and just lay on the bed, the, the pull out bed all day and watch like 90210, you know, reruns. Well, anyway, back in the yeah. day, they, were, they we did not call 90210 a evening soap. Because that's like, they, oh, oh, it wasn't oh. a thing. But, but it yeah. was totally an evening soap. And everybody watched it, including my grandparents. Yes, it was so good. Anyway. But anyway, but yeah, so his Murphy bed. Sorry. But again, this was way more interesting than this book. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah, there were other outfits, but like, um, definitely the uh, the corduroy jumpsuit. Yes, and all the part. jogging, like all his weird jogging outfits. But he doesn't have athletic clothing. No. It's odd for a professional athlete. Oh, no, I know. It was terrible. I just really, I, it was supposed to be unattractive, but I was like, that sounds cozy. Yes, it does. Rip, 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 rip. Rip, rip, rip. <laughs> so would your 12 year old self have dog in any pages yeah uh, he talks about her nipple uh, he, oh the God. book talks about her nipples all the time it is the nipple show all day this is all a night mini book. like <laughs> she's getting off on it and it was like again above the waist is super hot like and then they actually had sex and it was not a, yeah it's favorite. all like lighting in her bejangle and all yeah. you know you want to hear my favorite part yes her breasts seemed to swell, filling with a nectar meant only for him oh. as he admired them. That's always weird where the breasts get bigger. Yeah. Like, what's happening? I mean, I guess they do like a little or maybe just like, you know, I mean, he's hyper focused. He's tunnel vision. All he's seeing is damn titties. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, so. again, it was like above the waist hot, below the waist. Meh. Eh. They, they're often like that. And I know it's because, you know, yeah, they have, they, 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 they have to keep it a little more. What pairs nicely with a dumpster fire? Oh, this is like Chablis or something. Some oh, kind of like 80s. Terrible, yeah, like it's like, Reunity on ice. <laughs> it's, it's the wine that, you know what it is? It's the wine that you have that's half in the wicker little like thing. Oh, yeah. At the. At the like Italian schmestermont. <laughs> and then lastly, should a human being in the 21st. What? Should a human being in the year 2022 read this book? No. No. Do not read this book. It's no. more upsetting than it is anything else. I mean, unless you're doing like a paper on the normalization of, yes. of, of, of abuse and... Um, this book was terrible. Yeah. Uh, like zero stars. Do not recommend. No. Like this, All because of the ex-husband. Yeah. And again, because what happens is the ex-husband, because he's... It's not one of those, you know, like how in a lot of them we get where they're like a sex pest that they show up like for maybe 30 mm-hmm. pages total. Like this guy is half of the book. And and, and Ben O'Brien, he was real bad and real scary, but it yeah. had that historical context and he was gotten rid of. He was gotten rid of it. Like they got rid of him multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like it was satisfying. That's the other yes. thing. Like the in Ben O'Brien. Yeah. Like the spouse like kills this dude. Like I think he throws him off a fucking cliff. The, yeah. The, the leopard dad throws yeah. him off the cliff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, there's the. Uh, I, like, I would rather. Do, yeah. Like if you're going to read one, read one with the leopard dad. Because there's no comeuppance. What happens is this dude loses interest and marries his like fiance and leaves. Yes. It's awful. It happens off screen. It's that's the, the thing is, yeah, there's no there's no consequences. There's no like really satisfying like tell off it's too real yeah it's she doesn't too, get like any closure it's too, it's too real and and this is not at all like exclusive to 80s books i yeah. mean like i'm thinking very much about all this business with kim kardashian but yeah. it's easy to kind of like laugh because i mean same thing this is a guy who's a professional baseball player she's a professional whatever it is she does and you know it's not funny just because they're famous i guess is my point yeah no even if they're sure. like famous for like you know reasons that like you think are silly or that are silly deeply actually silly yes um you know it's not okay to stalk your ex no exactly and i think that's you know anyway this has not been one of our fun books no but i think it's good to talk about yeah it is and i mean this kind of thing does pop up in these um in these books not infrequently and this is a really really notable example of it so hey if you're doing your doctoral dissertation on, yes we got you yeah we got you on that one but um yeah for general people please don't read this yes well this has been our deeply unsatisfying episode of always and forever no uh, like- no that's a different book this is only forever oh. how are you supposed to remember that i mean seriously that's a that's the name of a romance novel in a parody tv show where somebody's i feel like that it's been only forever since we talked about this so <laughs> that doesn't even make sense um all right you should probably give us some money because <laughs> we read that okay. we had to pay money to buy that <laughs> so this has been our takeaway of 
Only forever, always forever. Who knows? Who cares? It's Linda Leo Miller. We loved Banner O'Brien because it was wonky. We don't love this one because it is... Too close to home. Too close to home. And if you love us, you should follow us on social media. We are on Instagram at Bodice Tipplers. We are on Facebook at Bodice Tipplers. We are on Twitter at B Tipplers. And if you want to throw us some money our way, we would love that. We understand if you're also like, take my money back after listening to this episode. We are at patreon.com slash bodice tipplers. Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts.